Hey guys, it's Chris McIntyre from The Awful Podcast. Today we're about to take you on a roller coaster ride of creativity and inspiration. Get ready to dive deep into game changing insights on creative sales strategies, content creation tips, and a deep exploration of the 48 Laws of Power. This episode is all about unlocking your potential and unleashing your creativity in ways you never imagined. So stay tuned for the awful podcast coming now. There it is. We're back. This is the third installment of the awful podcast. We're doing it. We're ready for action. And how's it going over there in Oklahoma, dude? We're doing good. Northern Oklahoma. We've been dodging a lot of the storms. We're in this perfect little pocket, knock on wood, because we'll get all the alerts. I'll get, my phone will get lit up talking about storms and all sorts of stuff, different mm-hmm. weather systems coming in. And uh, you can look at the map, they'll show you the progression and what they're expecting. And it just seems to split right over us. It either goes below us or above us. Nice. People above us are getting hammered right now. I follow a guy who's a... Uh, in the Iowa area on Snapchat, and he's been showing some wild stuff on his story. So they're getting hit lately, but I've had to climb down in the storm shelter once, and that was about a, over a month ago at this point. Huh. Since then, I've swept it out two or three different times just because it's like a spider magnet. Every time I go all the bugs. <laughs> I'll, even, I'll think to myself, I just swept it out a week ago. Should be fine, but let me double check. I go down there, I'd be like, I'd be pissed if I didn't if I came down here without sweeping it out, dude. There's like three or four <laughs> spiders down here. Yeah, you guys but get yeah. a ton of storms over there, man. I I listen to these other two podcasts um, when I'm out roofing, and they're, they're roofing podcasts, and they're based out of Oklahoma. And the shit they're talking about, there's hail all the time, fucking wind all the time. That's where it's at, man. Yeah, so that seems to be the central area just because of all the hail. Huh? Right. We've got Dude, we'll call them sky diamonds, man. Sky diamonds. I like it. Um, I got a auto insurance guy that fixes little dents on the cars and I'm starting to get them a little bit on my car. So went and talked to him. He's like, wait a little bit longer till storm season's over. See if you get hit a little bit more because it's best to just do it all at once. I'm like, this right. is wild. <laughs> Happens so often. I'm just driving around. With dimmits, a bunch of dings everything. in your car yeah. everywhere. <laughs> no, I made it out, dude. We'll get it fixed pretty soon. No so, kidding, dude. It's funny because I didn't notice them at first. After the first hail storm, I didn't notice much. And then you get different angles. I'll park at work, or I'll, I'll be walking out to my car at a different time of day where the sun's hitting it different. There's a couple little ones right there. A couple of chicken pox, <laughs> dude. And then it came back again a couple weeks later, and these ones. They didn't look as big, but they sounded a lot louder on the roof, and so they must have been more dense or something. And then I noticed a few more, and even some of the trim on my windows and stuff, it's getting hit. So I know all that stuff adds up when it comes, because obviously you have the $500 deductible, right? On, on my car insurance, that's what I have. And it's almost a situation where he's like, dude, you've got like $700 worth of damage. Right now. So if you're going to pay that deductible, let's see if we can... If Basically saying, dude, hopefully you get more damage. That's the way. Yeah, hopefully your there. windshield breaks and your yeah. roof caves in. <laughs> I'm sure it's the same game with uh, with roofing. The young lady that came to my neighborhood and was talking to everybody, she was showing, she's like, see that stuff that catches like glass up there? It's almost reflective or something. She pointed a couple things out. She's like, that's damage. What? It was like stuff. the fiberglass uh, shiny in the sunlight. Something like that. Like a couple things she pointed out that I do see that actually. So she's like, I yeah, think she was full of shit. It's funny, no. man. So dude, I guess Oklahoma is the place to do it. Come out here, dude. set up shop. I'm thinking about it, man. Like we keep doing shit like this. I'm going to, you know, I got a million ideas for a million businesses, but for sure, I know this makes money. And if there's hail all the time there, I want that. <laughs> and obviously knocking on doors, huge. And that seems to be the way that it's been done for years and years and years. It seems to be the most effective. Right. But there's so many ways that you can kind of break through and try to get in front of people digitally yeah. on the internet. Stuff right. Like that, you know what I mean? Just run saying, hey, or like door hangers big. Do you ever do those? We're working on some for our company right now, but they're on every door that I, I try knocking on. <laughs> so I guess a lot of that stuff just gets subconsciously lost in the mix. Something I noticed is the better the design, the more it looks professional and all well done, the more it just becomes junk mail and looks like all the rest of that stuff that looks all nice. And right. uh, I had a friend in the Reno area. She was a uh, project manager for different construction, road construction projects. And she worked for actually RTC. And there was this, there was this project that involved a big road, but there's this thing called right of way to where a construction pro- project will butt up to like property lines of people's houses, private property lines. And you have to basically reach out to a whole neighborhood of people and say, hey, here's what we're going to be doing. 
We just need you to sign off on it. It's in your best interest. It's going to make your property that much more valuable because we're actually making that or whatever they were. I think they were, it was like a it was like a big chain link fence, and they were going to make it like this big retaining sound wall that was going to look all nice and stuff. Huh. So everybody's going to say yes, but you still have to get every single person to sign a piece of paper. Right. And I made some door hangers for her. And I just made them real basic, just white background, bold letters. Yeah. I guess the way you describe it is almost like amateur looking compared to like, you know, the real nice flashy door hanger. Well, the ones. the ones are designed really well, which I could do those as well. But she even kind of, she's like, I don't want it to look like we're selling them anything. I want it to be just something that's like, hey, we need to talk to you about this. And her yeah. callback rate on it was like 80% of those people called it back. Really? So it's almost like something that looks official to her. It's almost like, hey. Big urgent, don't make it all nice and colorful and cool That's some good insight. That's yeah. I see all the you know these other companies that are out here doing it, they make really nice professional looking door hangers that look like a friggin' magazine on printed on a cardboard. And exactly. uh, just like, you're like, usually on the ground on the porch. Exactly. And it's just like a it's another thing you have to grab because you're doing the same thing with everything that's in your mailbox that looks like that. It's right. all well done. They probably spent a bunch of money to get it designed all well. The company that they're using to mail all that stuff shows them, like, look at all these cool templates. Look how nice. Yeah. So me as a company, I want to posture that way. I want to look professional. I want it to look just as good as the next guys. But yeah. you don't realize it's like sometimes there's a like point of diminishing return and less is more, right? So That's a good point. Really, you're just designing a really eclectic piece of trash because that's what everyone's going to do with it right that's away. Everybody's used to looking at it. Everybody's used to seeing that stuff and knowing instantly that it's like, yeah. You know, like I've gotten a million pieces of, uh, I want to know what's up. This might be a good thing to talk about on this podcast. I've got a really good hustle. I've got a good, are you guys able to work with businesses? Yes. Commercial. That's commercial yep. might even be more of a hit, right? Bigger paydays for bigger buildings and more affluent people with bigger budgets and stuff like that with their business. So yeah. check this out. Man. This is something I did and it works. It works. So here's the sauce. Get your notebooks out. Anybody who's oh. listening to this. Here we go. Lay it on us. Okay, it's a multi-step process. So what you're going to do at the beginning is it's a combination of Google, like Google Maps or just Googling stuff and finding where it is around the town, combined with actually driving around and seeing these places with your eyes to know that they're still there, know what they look like. Because things, I'm looking at like the bird's eye view on Google Maps or you're even kind of just around and stuff on Google Maps. It sometimes isn't quite the same as when you see it in person. You're like, I kind of this differently. So you want to do both. You want to scout through Google so you see all the businesses, you know, you want to see, okay, boom, in the area, there's 25 businesses that are like this, this, and some are brick and mortar, uh, you know, through the door to do business, buy stuff. Some of them are more like business to business where it's a warehouse and they're like, you wouldn't even know they're there except they got a little sign obscurely somewhere, stuff like that. But doing your research ahead of time before you go out and hit the field, you kind of know what's what. Now, when you're going out in the field, you're not going to talk to these businesses. You're not walking through the door. You're not going to like, introduce yourself or anything like that. You're just driving around to really put eyes on it, to add it to that final list. Like, okay, I know this is here. This is what it kind of feels like. This is what it looks like to me. And this is definitely one I'm adding. Or sometimes you look at it and you're like, no, it doesn't look like anybody's like been there forever or whatever, you know, yeah. your list because you looked online and you looked at the field a little bit. Now, your first thing you do is you call them. You get the number and you call them. Now, 90% of the time, a high percentage of the time, you're going to get what's called a gatekeeper. I'm sure you're familiar with the term. Gatekeeper is a receptionist or the person that answers the phone, whoever that might be. And they're kind of trained better than to be like, just trans- you call the president? Yeah, yeah, one second. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What you do, you say, hey, I'm so-and-so and I'm introducing myself to the community with what I do. We help people do X, Y, and Z. In your situation, you know, we help people you know, uh, insurance things. process. <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, even people, as soon as people hear insurance, sometimes they tune out, you'll figure out a cool little pitch, just something that's real easy. And you don't even, don't even elevator speech, speech too much. Just be like, my name's Chris. I just started a business in the area. We're able to help businesses. And I kind of want to introduce myself. So what I'm doing is I'm sending out introductory mailers to everybody in the community that I think would be a good fit. And someone I'd like to meet and create a relationship with. What's the name of the person that opens the mail there? Because I want to address it specifically to that person. Huh. Now, who's the person that opens the mail usually? It's got to be the owner. Someone that's a decision maker, right? Someone right. that, whatever, whatever that Manager, is. Manager, owner, CEO. 
I like yeah. Make sure that I'm addressing this correctly. Um, you know, they're not. It's it's no big deal. I just want to make sure that I'm taking this first step as I introduce myself to the community. Now that's not a surefire. That's not a hundred percent, but that gets you way further. So they tell you the name. So they usually will the name. I'm not asking to talk to them or anything like that. They'll tell you the name. Okay, how do I spell it? I spell it correctly. Okay, boom. Thank you very much. Now let's say you had a list of twenty that you made those calls to. That might now be a list of 10 to 15 that you've got names of people that open the mail, right? And now you right. really are going to create that mailer. Just a, the mailer isn't important. You've got to send them something though, because it's part of the process. Um, whether it's just a quick little letter, it doesn't have to be like, again, like this that stuff gets thrown out half the time anyway. So you don't have to worry about making it sound amazing. Look up. Just a quick, it less is more probably with the letter. If it's actually like they feel like they're reading the letter, they're like, oh shit, this is crazy. But right. Now on that envelope. Do you have good handwriting? I don't. So I, so I always find someone with good handwriting. Nope. It's usually like a, you know, a friend. Uh, now you really are going to handwrite these envelopes because how much more? Someone will read it. Someone's going to open that shit. Like, what is this? Yeah. Um, so they got their name spelled correctly. It's handwritten on the front of an envelope. You really mail it to them. You figure out how the USPS cycle is in that area. When to follow up. It's usually like, uh, three to phase over here. It could be a month with how interesting it's like seven that's. days over here. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't even make it for whatever reason over here. And I hear it's getting worse everywhere, but you figure that out, whatever that is anywhere. And now you're following up. So you're basically doing, I'd say a sustainable rate is 10 a day, unless you're really grinding, like with you, kind of what you do. So you might be able to knock out 50 a day. I don't know, whatever yeah. that rate is, as long as it's sustainable, because it's multi-steps every day, you got your 10, calls you made, you got your 10 pieces of mail you send out, then you got your 10 follow-up calls, right? The your cycle follow you keep. Yeah, and you got you got different columns of who's in this column, who's in this column, like, or something like that. Yeah. Um, then you do follow-up, and now you know who to ask for. Now, a, a gatekeeper, if you ask by name, like, you know, they'll transfer at that point. Chance right. Hey, let me talk to Kevin real quick. Yeah, is Kevin available? My name's Chris. Actually, you and I talked a little while back. I just wanted to follow up and make sure that that was received. If they ask, sometimes they'll just transfer. Right. And now you're getting in front of him. It's not the easiest thing, but it's not a cold call. It's a it's a right. lukewarm right. call. It's a <laughs> it was a very call. roundabout way to get in front of someone. <laughs> it's a, it's a lukewarm call, and uh, you're not asking about the mailer. You've mentioned the mailer. I sent a mailer out to the community. You're one of the business. So I was very interested in trying to develop a relationship. What I'm doing is I'm actually going to be out a little bit next week, and I'd love to find the time that you're available for business. I can just poke in, introduce myself. To them. They're going to say, yes, I got the mailer. I didn't get a chance to read it or whatever. They don't care about the mailer anyway if they got someone that wants to come and say hi. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and that, so let's say you started with 20 all the way down. You might get five uh, people that are wait, like they're expect, And of that five, three of them might be there. And those right. like. And if you're doing that every day, after a while, after you're, you know, you're feeding pipeline, if you're, if you're three to that list every day, you know what I yeah. mean? Adding five, 10, depending on how many of these mailers, calls, you call, mailer, follow-up call, appointment. Yeah. You're, you're adding, you're just making relationships, you're making friends, and now you're remembering little things and you're poking back in. Now you know the day's there, you're poking back in. If it's a guy that owns like a little bar grill, maybe you're going in there for lunch every once in a while. Or if it's a guy that owns a paint shop, Maybe you're going in there like, you know, or about the paints. Like if you're dealing with people that have Asking hail some damage. Questions. Yeah, if you're dealing with people that have hail damage, I bet you have conversations with them about their hail damaged car all the time too. Right. And like, yeah, like people are needing paint stuff and stuff like, you know, there's a way to where you can like, you're not going in there like, hey, you're going to do business. You're going in there and you kind of have reason to, you know, whatever, like a little shop or a shop dog or something. And you get that and you learn that thing's name. And you're like, I just want to come by to say hi to buddy, you know, yeah. I was in the <laughs> around here. And you're just making friends, making friends, making friends. Dude, you will. And then eventually it comes out, hey, have you any, anyone looking at the roof yet? <laughs> yeah. And it's not like you're going too roundabout. They know who you are and they know what you do. But right. you're not just hitting them really hard for that sale. Or or if, it, and 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 you go away to where it's like you you give the, um, you about say yes without saying definite no. You know what I mean? And then yeah. that's when you can keep being a friend, keep coming back. Unless you kind of, you sense each situation as you see it, you know? If you're seeing the personality type or the person that had no clue that like their insurance will pay for this stuff and everything, you're like, let's get this started. Like you need a roof right now. Like, let me get up there. Or yeah. if it's a guy that's real busy and he's like, oh man, you're the fourth one of these guys that's come this month. You're <laughs> like, I know, man. It's because there's so much demand. It's because there's so many people that need their roofs fixed. So that's why everybody has this tenacity to come out and talk to yeah. people because it's, I mean, the need for it justifies that many people. 
But either yeah. way, I mean, if you're busy and if I know some people don't like a salesman breathing down their throat, I'm honestly just new to the community. I'm really trying to get out and introduce myself. And the more people I know, the better, even if it's just a buddy, a friend, an acquaintance. If there's any way we can connect, I actually run a podcast if you want to promote your business or anything like that. Oh, yeah. Whatever it is, you know what I mean? So yeah. uh, that Man, that's, that's a really great strategy that I, I think I'm going to try. I can't see that how that would lose. It works really good with businesses. I'm not sure yeah. how that could be modified or because uh, I know I'll do a, lot it. Of people, a lot of it. I'll do it to businesses. Business. You know, yeah. that's what I'll target. I'll target businesses with that model and see how that works out. You know, and everybody's knocking on doors in neighborhoods. How many people are really hitting the businesses hard? How many people know how to get through those gatekeepers? How many people try right. to walk into three or four businesses and they're like, no soliciting, no, 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 no. You're yeah. not soliciting at that point. You've made contact right. a couple times. You're just following up and, and you basically made the appointment. And it can just be like a casual appointment. It's not like, I'd like to make an appointment with you to come in and talk about this piece of mail I sent to you, this letter I sent to you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's awesome. You got it. Um, I'm actually going to be in your neck of the woods. I'd love to explain that further or answer any questions that you might have about it. Or really just, you know, I'm just out trying to meet people, work with businesses. Kinda, that's my thing. And I'm relatively yeah. new to the area because you are new to the area. You'd be like, you know, I'm originally from Northern Nevada, just came out yeah. here, um, you know, doing some business stuff. And I'm really just trying to meet people, make friends. There's actually a multitude of ways I, that I work with businesses, uh, not only through my actual, you know, my, whatever you want to say. My day my job. job. I could get you career. a roof, but I also do media stuff. I do yeah. a lot of promotional things. I do podcasting. I'm and a, I'm, You're an honorary member of the Rotary Club. And right. That kind of, that kind of, yeah. So whatever, however that works. So yeah, dude, that's a really good way. What I was doing is I was working with this, working under this guy as a, I don't even know what you call it. He was kind of like my, my sales manager slash like my mentor type thing yeah. for uh, financial services where you help people, you know, invest money, plan for retirement. Um, get different types of insurance to protect their income. But a lot of what this firm did was wanted to work with business owners and stuff like that. So yeah. I created a uh, I created a website, and this was in Reno. It was called The Biggest Little Survey. Always playing with our words. The biggest Little Survey in oh, the world. Oh, dude. I hear another Biggest Little or Battleborn something. I'm going to freaking uh, renamed it. Well, hey. Get ready for a whirlwind of excitement and insight with the AWFL Podcast, where hosts me, Chris McIntyre, and Lonnie Doyle bring you in engaging discussions on content creation, podcast editing, tech trends, apparel designs, and all things technology. While over at the Partial Intelligence Podcast, Jason Kahn and myself dive into music, sports, hip-hop beasts, and heartfelt family matters. It's a roller coaster of entertainment and enlightenment that you won't want to miss. Subscribe now to the Awful Podcast and Partial Intelligence on your favorite podcast platform and join us for a journey through the worlds of creativity, technology, music, and life. AWFL Podcast and Partial Intelligence, available anywhere you get your podcasts. Your ticket to warm, exciting, and diverse content awaits. Tune in today. Now let's jump back into the episode of Almost Above Average with Chris McIntyre. Known. Yeah, Battleborn is everywhere over there. Um, so this is what mine was. Biggest little survey, Reno Small Business Survey, Strategic Future, dedicated to bettering re Reno business with data that matters. I actually got a lot of people to do this survey, and it was actually putting together like good huh. data. It was like a legit survey. It was uh, making, it was like people were interested in it. But ultimately, this is what I was using for my mailing system to meet businesses. Mm -hmm. And my follow-up was, you know, it's online and you can take it online, but I love sitting down with people in person and taking this and meeting people and learning more because this survey only answers so much. And I learn a ton more about the conversations I have with the business owners. This was around the time that a lot of the COVID stuff was happening. The lockdown, look at 2022. Yeah. Um, welcome to 2022 Reno Business Survey. This study is by, lo is by local business owners for local business owners. Your participation is vitally appreciated general stuff. What's cool about this survey is every step they took. So you only fill out a few things right here, right? Name, email, business name, your affiliation. Are you a founder, partner, executive board member, director, administration? When they hit next step, um, this comes to me. So even if they don't finish the survey, every yeah. next step is a is an email to me with that information. So you got an email. Boom. Please fill required fields. Oh, it's going to oh. Okay, bro. Okay. Oh, dude, that was a freaking... We're on a tight ship with this thing. Dude, that's dope. So next step, business information. When was the business started? Um, it was started. Give me a date. A little drop down. Boom. 
average number of employees. We got one to 15 number of key employees. That's good, especially <laughs> if you're a financial Favoritism. planner. But, you know, the more higher earning, the people that are important, um, number of partners in the business. That's also a good thing to know. Number of business locations. Okay, dude, we're balling. We got one to five. Does the business own real estate? This is all good stuff for me to know through the financial planning stuff, but it's also important because what I wanted to do is if I would have got like a thousand people to do this or something, this is legitimate data that I could bring to actual decision makers yeah. in the area. You know, people that can really make a difference. There, right. this is, so this is like your way to be heard. Growth and changes. How many times a business changed location since inception? Foresee business undergoing significant change over the next two years. Just a bunch of stuff like this, right? Boom. Yeah. Business suffered supply chain shortages since March of 2020. You know what I'm asking there, right? That is, has, has COVID messed your business up, right? Oh, right, right, right. Has COVID messed your stuff up? In the last three years, this business has grown its number of employees, reduced its number of employees, kept the same. That's also another nice way of asking, like, are you hurting? How's from the COVID? business doing? <laughs> hurting from COVID. Type right. Stuff. Okay. Number of years since business has been evaluated. That's also another good thing that I want to know as a service, like professional uh, financial services provider. The last time a business succession plan was entered, reviewed, boom. Business succession plan, that's like if you want to exit, if you want to sell it, if you want to give it to a kid, something like that. Please check the following events that your business has not planned for. <laughs> this is all stuff we could have helped with, right? So I'm asking these questions pretty cleverly. Check the following challenges that your business currently faces. Workforce shortages was huge back then. Submit. Success. And then you get Whatever. all of that, huh? I get all that. Uh, and then it also shows you how you did on the thing. Um, yeah, it was legit. It was good. It asked all the right questions. Yeah. And ultimately, I mean, obviously my primary thing was I'm trying to meet you and I have a legitimate reason to come meet you and talk to you. I'm doing something that's important. But it's really just creating relationships, right? This is something we could do too, man. We could create a survey for you. Now we're getting into something that we could do one for businesses. Now we're getting doing something that people like, like buy ads for this on Facebook, be like, um, take a quick survey to see, you know, um, take a two minute survey to see how much, how many more years your roof, roof is going to last. Like, oh, I'd yes. be interested. I'd yes. be interested, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you structure the questions accordingly. Let's see what the about us was. And now that you have the survey for that, now you can start reaching out to people, sending mailers and trying to figure out that whole thing and following up with actual, you know, houses, neighborhoods and stuff like that. I've got a survey. It's online. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but I'd love the opportunity to come talk to you about it in person and have you fill out the survey and show you some more stuff as well about us. Boom, boom, our mission. That page isn't that great, but uh, yeah, dude. And I had, uh, I had the mailers. I had the little uh, little stickers and stuff made that had my return address and that logo on it and stuff. And yeah. then all the envelopes were handwritten. And written envelopes. Dude, that's so much easier than knocking doors. Well, not easier. It's a lot more thing to add to it, You know what I mean? Yeah. It's another yeah. way to start getting people in your in your thing. And also, does your industry have something along the lines of what what do they call it in the car industry? Bird dogs is let's say I'm a car salesman at a car dealership, right? Mm -hmm. I have a customer that I'm talking to, working with, but we don't have the car they want. And it turns out the dealership down the street has the car they want. Well, what I can yep. do is I can make the introduction. And then they'll bird dog me like a hundred bucks. Oh, know, little kickbacks? Thing. Yeah, there's tons of that. So that's a cool thing when you're on the internet. Obviously, you want to target certain areas that you can work with people, but you know, people on the internet find stuff from everywhere. So let's say someone right. from California is like, uh, dude, I took your survey. I'm interested. How can you help? Like, give me one second. Can I call Let me call a roofer in California. Hey, exactly. give me 200 bucks. I got to leave for you. Or whatever that is. Or like 500. Or, or yeah, just like reach out to one of the people that do it out there and be like, okay, who's the contractor you guys work with? All right, cool. Yeah. Thanks. And then you call the contractor. You're like, hey, hey what's up? Like, yeah. <laughs> I got someone in the area. Like, how can we figure this out? You know what I mean? Because I might be able to bring you more people too. Dude, that's a great idea. Dude, we could launch like a campaign. I, I was thinking of doing that too, is just going out climbing roofs, signing contracts, and then selling the contracts. I was thinking yeah. of doing that. Yeah, if you button it all up and all the paperwork's right to where in this packet is yeah. A to Z, every I is dotted, every T is crossed, yep. there you go. I want the money right now. I'm not trying to... Yeah, okay. I want 500 today versus, you know, two grand in three months. Like, yeah. give me 500 today, you can give have me, it. Give me 50 cents on the dollar for this thing right now. And yeah, then you have fun. there's a lot of value in that. Like, I'd, I'd pay for leads right now. You know, 
especially if it's all buttoned up, like the person's ready to go. You verify yeah. their insurance. You know, you know it's a freaking go. Yeah, dude. Big money. Yeah, so that yeah. kind of stuff's fun, man. I've always been good at that. Um, I think we need to work so, or we need to work on keep continue that idea for later. I think that would be something cool to to actually work on. Yeah. What else have you been working on? Uh, everything, dude. I uh, just a lot of the same stuff we've been talking about. I'm still plugging away at merch claim. Still yeah. excited about that. I have been doing morning radio out here. There's a morning buzz. It's a radio show out here. Yeah. And the guy had me on once and then he keeps calling me back. We kind of figured out a schedule because it's early in the morning. And if I'm able to kind of sit in there and chat with him a little bit for the first half hour of the show, I'm still able to get out of there and get to work on time. Nice. So I'm not able to stay the whole time, but it's kind of cool for me. I'm not having to do the full hour. I kind of just get in and out and keep yeah. happy with it. But I've already got a relationship with that network of radio shows. They actually own two or three of them in the area. Mm -hmm. The owner, his name's Lyman. He, uh, he's the guy I've been working with because I've got Konzo Radio that I do with my tribe. It's kind of like a podcast slash radio show. And he's yeah. the one that produces those shows and airs them on the weekends on a couple of his radio stations. Mm -hmm. So this morning buzz show is also on one of his radio stations and it's with this other guy. Um, nice. Yeah, guy's cool. It's fun. It's chill. Is it just like a morning, morning show? You, like you're a host? Um, I don't know what I am at this point. I'm like a returning <laughs> guest, but I'm starting to get like more comfortable with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. To where he's so good at it. Like there's definitely like a talent to where he keeps everything moving to where he'll talk to me. He'll ask a question. You yeah. know me, like I can just keep going. And right. he has that, he has the skill where he, it's not like an abrupt cutoff, but he'll kind of just, yeah. And then he goes into something else. He'll talk about the weather a little bit, talk about this and that, and keep it interesting. Dude, I've met a lot of people like that. I, I, I envy that. Like, I wish I had it. I think it's, it's a developed skill. I think it's something that we'll both get better at, especially if we continue doing this stuff. Oh, hundred percent. I hate those times when like, I've had it a couple times in here, just you run out of words or the guest is done talking and i'm like fuck i, I ran out of <laughs> things to ask i hate when that happens that's the beauty <laughs> of editing too though you can go in and cut out that little lull oh yeah 100 percent. i have that with the um cons or radio um i've gotten so comfortable with it i used to try to still get it as perfect as i can just first yeah. take during the recording and then there's just a couple little things i gotta cut out here and there Sometimes I'll mm -hmm. say a bunch or the person I'm interviewing says or and like crazy. So I got to go in and cut all that stuff out. Yeah. What I have found is lately I'm like, we're going to keep recording. We're not going to stop recording. If there's something that you don't like how you said it, just say, I don't like how I said that. And I'm going to say it again. And here I go. I'm saying it again. Boom, boom, boom. Or I'll do that. Or I'll be in the middle of something. I'll be like, oh, I can't remember that person's name. Oh, I can't remember. What's that called? What's that called? And, we'll be, and you'll hear people like flipping through papers and stuff and we'll find it. Yeah. Okay. That, and then I'll, I'll say it again. You'll go re right. Yeah. Restart. <laughs> and then when I'm just going in and editing, I freaking just cut it all out and it sounds like one cohesive thing. So I'm getting super comfortable with that side, maybe too comfortable. What I have noticed is it creates like this really relaxed environment for people that maybe if they were trying to posture too much or they were a little too nervous and they're saying, um, um, a bunch, it's because they're nervous. They kind of just get this chill, like it's more just like a chill conversation. Right. And even if there's more for me to edit, like cutting out full blocks of like audio where there's a big mistake and we repeat it in that same cut, there's yeah. still way less like ums and nervousness and the person sounds a lot more natural. So yeah, straight off. that's kind of what I tried to create in here. The first couple that I did, like I didn't know how to start it. So it always felt phony and it felt fake. You know? All right, we're about to record. So everyone like has that weird face that they make before the picture is getting taken. They're like, okay, like here we go. Like, oh, and then I don't know how to jump into it. And so what I started doing after that, and it, I've been doing it ever since, is just when we get in here, I hit record and just we're, we're just taught, we're just being here now. We're just existing together and having a conversation. So, you know, take that weird part of it. All right, ready, action. You Three, know, <laughs> two, one. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah don't fuck it up. It's good to be able to foster that kind of environment. That's also something that the morning show guy does really well. It's just kind of, he'll even, because yeah. uh, that's live. That's a lot. That's not like a yeah. fix it later type thing. And so I'll get in there a little bit early and we'll just kind of start chatting a little bit just about whatever and kind of just get into the flow. Yeah. And once we go live, we just kind of keep that going. And then nice. they just say like, we were just talking a minute ago. You mentioned this, this, this. Tell us about that. Blah, blah, blah. 
Hmm. He sounds like he's got his whole like his thing down. Down. You know? um, older gentleman. He uh, he's got that real deep voice. And yeah. you know, like on the phone and stuff, he kind of sounds like a radio guy a little bit, but that's what it okay. works. It works for the radio stuff. Have you seen that segment that I do on Thursdays with uh, the Dr. Joe Shepard or the clips that I've been putting out? He's an older gen, not that much older. He's like in his 50s, but he has this such a deep, calming voice. Like I, I love talking with him. I think I've seen a clip. Of yeah, you probably have. I put a couple out yesterday. Yeah. But I, I just love. It sounds like freaking Morgan Freeman. It's so easy to listen to. So if half the time when we're talking, I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just listening because I want to listen. And that's it. You know? You're like, tell me again about how that guy escaped through the tunnel from the prison. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty cool. And we've been, um, since he was the one that kind of gave me the idea to cut, start cutting up these episodes. So we record for like an hour and I chopped his up into three episodes. So then I got the next three Thursdays covered. So I want to, I'm going to start incorporating that with the other ones too. Like I recorded an hour and a half today with that recovering uh, drug addict and that's at least two episodes, you know, so I'm he getting better at, at over that story. Yeah. So if the timing works, you can kind of like do cliffhangers. I'm just, I'm just on a cliffhanger. So right before he goes in the story, it's probably like 43 minutes in before I ask him about it. And then, uh, they, there's a natural moment that happened in it that is a cliffhanger, so I am going to cut it at that, and then Perfect. post another <laughs> post it the following way. week. That's the way. To, that's awesome. That yeah. kind of stuff is like that's what people want to hear, and it's weird. It's almost like when you first think about it, you're like, "Ooh, like I'm not too comfortable with that," or "I'm a little bit uncomfortable." Like I'm not yeah. sure if this guy's like he's very forthcoming with something so crazy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, my little sensors go off. So we're like, is this guy like, is this guy cool? Like, what's going on here? Yeah. But you got to realize that when those little those little sensors go off, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the good stuff. That is what people are going to tune into. Like, people are going right. to love that. Right. Because it, it would be good either way. Like, it, let's say his plan was to come in here and lie to me. Like, I'd be sitting here knowing that he's lying the whole time. Like, this is going to be great either way. So Get the popcorn out. Get the yeah. Popcorn out, good. Dude. As like a person <laughs> that watches and listens to podcasts, I'd be like. At first, I listened to it, be like, "That's a crazy story." And then right. maybe you start trickling little breadcrumbs on social media, like, "Well, kind of turns out that that guy was full of shit or whatever." Kind of like, uh, what was it? Remember when Oprah used to have her book club, and yep. then there was that one book. It was called "A Million Little Pieces" or something like that. I don't remember that. It was a guy that was talking about his um, drug addiction and how he overcame drug addiction, and he was a really good author in the way he would kind of the way he wrote this book was just it was insane like it took over the country like everybody was reading it as soon as oprah announced as soon as oprah it, said it yeah. yeah well it turns out he was full of shit no he kidding was of, he was full of shit with it and then answer armstrong did and then what do you think the ratings on the oprah show did when she's talking about it right this episode oh, yeah. had something very serious to talk about with author so-and-so it only it all was good at no right. point did sales of the book fall off from any of that at no point did her credibility fall off and no yeah, viewership didn't didn't fall. right so yeah. it's all good so i was kind of right. thinking about that because i was really hesitant with that one episode that i sent to you where, um, oh where yeah i guess that told a crazy story that was i was really apprehensive story. and then when i sent that for approval before it got produced at the radio show i was like no way this is gonna prove yeah and uh immediately got an email back like in the amount of time it would take you to listen to it like the email came that quick they're like, yeah. that sounds great. That's a great message to the community. We want, we really like that. And I'm like, that's crazy. So that's, that's definitely the best episode I've ever done. Right. And that was also the episode that I almost didn't do. Right. So <laughs> yeah. kind of like, it's that fine line where that's, that's, where that's the, the mark. Is. That's where the good shit is. Like if you're, yeah. you're almost kind of like, I mean, Dude. obviously for the right reasons, there's some stuff to where if you're, if your spidey senses go off, like this might not be a good thing. It's for the right reasons in some situations. But sometimes yeah. it's like, it's just because it's not like this super vanilla appropriate thing. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't still, people like that stuff. I mean, think about like true crime and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stuff. I'm a big fan. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to make a career out of it. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to find like horrible people with horrible stories, but if they're, you know, if I hear something, I'm like, that sounds, I don't know, maybe a little blue, like, like a, someone's murdered. Yeah. I want to hear it. Like, I want to hear that story. Yeah. You know, find those people that want to tell those stories and like have those stories. 
Yeah. And they haven't already done it like on 50 other shows. Even then, <laughs> probably still might, you know, there's still an audience out there that hasn't heard it. Oh, 100%. Person. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of stuff's huge. And a lot of those YouTube channels that do really well with it, they're not talking about anything new. It's not like they found something that hasn't already been right. covered. Yeah, you and that's story... like Jeffrey Dahmer, and people would be like listening to it. So they would. Jeffrey Dahmer's interesting as shit. Dude, we're old enough to where I think we were we we were alive during. That. Oh yeah, yeah. When he was like on trial, that was in the eighties, was wasn't it? Yeah, like the mid mid eighties, I think, mid to late eighties. You know what, dude? We can always check that. I'm glad it gave me the auto suggestion immediately because there's a bunch of different ways to spell Jeffrey. All right. <laughs> Killed 17 boys from 78 to uh, 91. So, yeah, a lot of the crimes happening in our time. Not only were a lot of the crimes happening, like, during our years, because I'm, I was born in 81, so, like, most of the 90s. Exactly. But, obviously, we were around for, like, the whole trial and when that really got exposed and stuff, too. There were a yeah. ton of books and movies and shows and stuff that even came out way back then. Dude, this was a crazy time because this is also around the same time as uh, O.J. Simpson stuff, too. Oh, yeah. When was O.J.? Let's find out. It, Dude, I was in sixth grade, so what is that, 93 maybe? Yeah. Bronco Chase, perfect date, dude. That's right up our alley. <laughs> 94. Man, we had a crazy time there, dude. Yeah, we had O.J. We had the, world, the first World Trade Center. That was in the 90s, wasn't it? What? We've got some crazy history. Like, what are the crazy things that happened before us? JFK was before our time. Pearl Harbor way before our time. The Watergate thing. Yep. I am not a crook. Okay, so there's I just, every generation has their stuff, but we definitely had. There's no shortage of it during our time either. No, we got a worldwide pandemic in ours. Oh God. Okay. You know what? I'm getting depressed. Okay. <laughs> that was the worst time. I I hated all of that. Wearing yes. masks every day, freaking, uh, they were so uncomfortable. It's all coming to light, dude. People are getting exposed, so. Yeah. It restores faith in humanity, you know what I mean? I yeah. I think a lot of people are a lot more aware when it comes to that stuff. I was able to avoid the vaccination, and I don't know enough about it. I'm sure there's a bunch of people out there that had helped and stuff. They talk about injuries from it and the people that got messed up from it. I've never personally heard of anything or seen anything, so I don't know. And it's kind of by chance. Like, I guarantee if I was in a situation where I had like a really good, like if I had like a $100,000 a year job at the time, and they're like, you got to get the shot, I'd be like, get the shot. Yeah, hook it up. (laughs) I was able to avoid it kind of by chance and just wasn't really in any positions that was really trying to make me do it. I had a buddy, uh, Chandler Allen, who we're going to get on the show, so we have to. Yeah. Um, And he was tripping because he had that job. He had like a director's position through the federal government, making really good money, and he was not going to get that. He was ready to roll it Lose up. Lose it all? Yeah, he was. I remember that. There were a lot of people like that. Like, that time period when everyone had to get their vaccination, dude. Everyone had that same attitude, like, you can't force me. You know, like, it was a weird time in our country. Dude, it was crazy. Kind of, It was a good uh, sampling, like a good test run for, like, what you can expect in situations like that. Yeah. Uh, Whereas like 9-11 happened to America and it was countrywide. We all felt the effects of it. But in my experience, it felt like we kind of came together after that. Yes. You know, there was a lot more love like early 2002, 2003. Yeah. And then they took advantage of it. Right. And old Bush was like, okay, let's go raid Iraq. It's like, dude, they didn't even do it. Like, what are you talking about? Weapons. Wrong country, dude. What's going on? (laughs) No, we're doing it. Everybody's like, screw it. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to point either of them out on a map, so that's close enough. Let's go. Hey, dude, that's literally how it was, too. Like, so the common I felt like we were fighting a good war during that. Like, oh, yeah. Everybody was back at you. Oh, dude, you would be completely ostracized if you spoke up like, wait a sec. Like, that's not really. That's not the enemy. That's <laughs> not. You got Saddam Hussein. You got bin Laden. Like, and there's not a lot of it. Like, those aren't the same thing. Um, But the one common denominator, whether we, whether. Us as a country, we're coming together, which was such a beautiful thing. Makes you miss it because you've got the yeah. contrast of where it kind of divided a lot of people, and a lot of people are still divided to this day. The yeah. one common denominator is that good old government, they stepped in and took advantage. Either way, they're like, we're going to do the Patriot Act. We're going to do, yeah. we're going to go to <laughs> war. And then this one, they're like, we're going to shut down businesses. We're going to do a lockdown. We're going to control people. 
Yeah. And so both both times that like I forget what the term is, but they're like never never waste a good a good tragedy. Tra- yeah. Never waste a good tragedy. I Nothing get it. I mean, that's kind of the same thing we were just talking about. Like, all attention is good attention, eventually. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, there's um, opportunity in everything, right? Yeah. There's opportunity. Have you read The 48 everything. Laws of Power? Yes. That's a really, I really enjoyed that book. I like the perspectives in that book. My favorite thing about that is like, how much it teaches you about history. I love all the, like, because they'll give yeah. you a, they'll give you an example of everything. And it's always, like, some cool-ass story from way in the back. Right. And they give you the opposite of the law. They give you like a bunch of things proving how it was true. Like, I really liked how that was written. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of it that's bad. Like, there's a side of me to where it's like, I don't even want to admit that I've read that book because a lot of it's just some fucked up, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I can't tell you like how many of those different laws to where I'm like thinking back and like different stuff I've tried business wise and people I've worked with and situations that went really bad. It's like, did this dude read this book or like what's going on? Like, am I the last person to like know about this book or what's going on? Yeah. So much of it's bad. You know what I mean? So the way I look at it, it's like, okay, the history lessons and the cool stories they talk about in history, super entertaining. I love that touch to it. That's kind of showed me like, cause I don't know a lot about history. So that's almost like some of my like deepest learning when it comes to a lot of that stuff. And right. then and the other way I look at it is like, Hey, just because you understand this concept doesn't mean you need to employ this concept. You know exactly. what I mean? Yep. Like, like let somebody else take the blame. You know what I'm saying? And all that kind yeah. of stuff. Like knowing about it, it's like knowing about it is the only way that you're going to be able to avoid it and make the world a better place with less of that kind of stuff too. Because right. I truly believe like, that's like a, basically the, the moral to that story in a lot of ways is like a zero sum outcome. Like, for me to yeah. win, everybody has to lose, or there has to be losers in bad, bad ways for me to win. Yeah, it was a very scorched earth type of yeah. And, take them out completely. You got to annihilate him. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's literally one of them. Like, yeah. Um, and then uh, I believe in like there is win wins if there's the right people because you see these partnerships. You see people that create partnerships where they needed each other. They grew together. They both did really well. There was never a rift between them. They were super loyal to each other and it worked out beautifully. So there are examples of like, there is win-wins out there. There is people coming together and, you know, creating something from nothing. That's almost like, right. we can get into that, the concept of something from nothing. But yeah, the 48 laws of power. I would power, argue it happens more often that way than, than it going bad. It's just, you don't hear about it when it's going good, you know? And whenever there's someone that really, really, really killed it, like someone that really blew up, Especially if it's somebody that like isn't like a super like like programming genius. Like anybody that can write code, anybody that's super nerded up and they're killing yeah. it. Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk. It's just because they're super smart and they knew they just killed it because they're super smart. They didn't necessarily screw anybody over anything, even though I'm sure there are a lot of fallout. There's plenty of stories of people that like didn't make it along the way and probably aren't too happy. But when there's like people that it's like, how did that like, how did that guy do that? You know that there's, like, a trail of, like, bodies that got to that point. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's definitely a bunch of 48 Laws of Power type stuff that took place with certain people. I just get that. Yeah, like out. Putin, right? Like, Putin got Putin, to the top through right. some crazy power dynamics. Oh, I'm sure right? he understood a lot of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, I think it's necessary. It's out of necessity a lot of times when people have to come together to build big things and work together. Yeah, And there's just that element of, you know, there's no replacement for loyalty, right? I mean, yeah. there's no amount of money, like, the, the true wealth is having, like, loyalty, right, they say. So, you just got to remind yourself of, and I think when you're creating something from nothing and you actually created something, it creates that anxiety, like, oh, my God, I did it, I can't lose this. But you can also have the other perspective, like, dude, I was looking for this when I found this one. I started from <laughs> nothing. Who's to say I can't do this again if this doesn't work? I've got my values. I've got the things that are important to me that I won't betray no matter what, even if I have to risk this. Because like, like I said, like I was trying to get here when I got here this time. And that's a wrap on today's electrifying episode of The Awful Podcast. 
I hope you enjoyed the ride and found inspiration in our discussions on creative sales strategies, content creation, and the 48 Laws of Power. If you love what you heard, please take a moment to leave us a glowing five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback does mean the world to us. And don't keep all this excitement to yourself. Share the awful podcast with your friends and family, and let's build a community of creatives who are ready to conquer the world together. Remember, the more, the merrier. But before you go, make sure to check out the Almost Above Average podcast and the Partial Intelligence podcast for more engaging content and insightful conversations. They're sure to keep your creative juices flowing. And in the meantime, thank you for tuning in to the Awful Podcast. And until next time, keep creating, keep innovating, and keep winning like a champion you are.